welcome to the CS Chapel. Uh, we're very glad to see you here, and we're very glad to be able to worship with you this morning. Um, if you would just take a minute to pray with me here. Dear Lord, thank you so much that we can take some time to worship you this morning. Thank you for all the areas of study, the knowledge, and the skills that we can gain here at Calvin, and thank you for your many blessings. Help us, Lord, to live for you today and to make the most of what you give us. Amen. turn with me to Genesis chapter 2. We'll be reading from verse 10 to 12. A river watering the garden flowed from Eden. From there it was separated into four headwaters. The name of the first is the Pishon. It winds through the entire land of Havila, where there is gold, and the gold of the land is good. Aromatic resin and onyx are also there. We'll also be reading from Job 28, from verse 1 to 4. There is a mine for silver and a place where gold is refined. Iron is taken from the earth and copper is smothered from ore. Mortals put an end to the darkness. They search out the farthest recesses for ore in the blackest darkness. Far from human dwellings, they cut his shafts in places untouched by human feet. Far from other people, they dangle and sway. Verse 12. But where can wisdom be found, and where does understanding dwell? No mortals comprehend its worth. It cannot be found in the land of the living. Verse 23. 
God understands the way to it, and he alone knows where it dwells, for he views the ends of the earth and sees everything under the heavens. Verse 28. And he said to the human race, The fear of the Lord, that is wisdom, and to shun evil is understanding. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The book of Genesis opens with the creation account, describing a beautiful world of sea, earth, sky, plants, fish, birds, and other animals. But tucked away in the midst of this story, there's a curious verse, one which parenthetically mentions that the gold of that land is good. Aramitic resin and onyx are also there. Onyx refers to precious stones, and a small footnote suggests that aramitic resin might actually refer to pearls. But why is this parenthetic verse actually there? Why is it significant enough to be included in this creation account? Well, this is the first mention of gold and pearls, but they appear in many other places in the scriptures. Later in Genesis, we read about how the treasures of the Egyptians were given to the people of Israel as they fled Egypt. However, in Exodus 32, we read about how Aaron fashioned Israelite gold into a golden calf. In other places, we read of gold being fashioned into idols, like in Daniel 3, where King Nebuchadnezzar fashioned an image made of gold and forced people to worship it. But references to gold, pearls, and precious stones are not only about idolatry. In other passages, we see them being put in service to the Lord. In Exodus 35, we read about Bezalel, who was filled with the Spirit of God, with wisdom, with understanding, with knowledge, and with all kinds of skills to make artistic designs for work in gold, silver, and bronze, to cut and set stones, and to work in wood, and to gauge in all kinds of artistic crafts. Furthermore, Bezalel, along with Oholiab, were given the ability to teach these skills to others so that the tabernacle could be built. These skills were put in service to God and in the construction of the temple. After the birth of Christ, we read about how the wise men brought gifts, and these gifts included gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Here, the gold noted already in Genesis 2 is one of the materials that are presented to the newborn Christ. Curiously, the materials gold, onyx, and pearls mentioned in Genesis 2, the second chapter of the Bible, reappear in the second to last chapter of the Bible, Revelations 21 verse 20 describes the holy city, a new Jerusalem, as a city of pure gold, and one decorated with precious stones, including onyx, with the gates made of pearls, all materials already mentioned in Genesis 2 verse 12. One important note, though, the new Jerusalem is not something that we build. It comes down out of heaven. There are no parts that are subcontracted to humans. Its builder and architect is God. Elsewhere, we read that Jesus himself is preparing a place for us. In the meantime, we're called to make some imperfect models of the perfect world to come, using the various materials that God has provided in creation. Job 28 also includes a fascinating passage about how humans have learned to mine for gold and precious metals and stones, the ones mentioned in Genesis 2. Job 28 celebrates the human ingenuity in the ways that we use technology to uncover and transform the Earth's resources. But technological competence is distinct from wisdom. Reading Job 28, we can see the contrast between technological know-how and wisdom. So reading from, from Job 28, there is a mine for silver and a place where gold is refined. Iron is taken from the earth and copper is smelted from ore. Mortals put an end to the darkness. They search out the farthest recesses for ore in the blackest darkness. Far from human dwellings, they cut a shaft. In places untouched by human feet, far from other people, they dangle and sway. And later in the same chapter, we, we read about how this is contrasted with wisdom. Verse 12. But where can wisdom be found? Where does understanding dwell? No mortal comprehends its worth. It cannot be found in the land of the living. 
God understands the way to it, and he alone knows where it dwells. For he views the ends of the earth and sees everything under the heavens. And finally, in verse 28, and he said to the human race, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom, and to shun evil is understanding. The golden minerals mentioned in Genesis 2 verse 12 are not a fluke. They are part of the possibilities in creation that we're called to uncover. But what you and I and the whole world needs far more than gold or lithium or faster silicon chips is wisdom. And wisdom is an awe and a delight in God and and a desire to follow his ways. And then wisdom can be put into service to guide our ingenuity, to mine the earth's resources and design cultural artifacts that honor the Lord, rather than building golden calves or building modern towers of Babel. While human ingenuity is to be admired, wisdom is of much more value. In closing, I'll read a few verses from Proverbs 3 which contrasts the wisdom of God from gold and precious stones. From Proverbs 3. Blessed are those who find wisdom, those who gain understanding, for she is more profitable than silver and yields better returns than gold. She is more precious than rubies. Nothing you desire can compare with her. Let's read together from Our World Belongs to God. Uh, Let's stand, please. Not because this is scripture, but we read better standing, I think. (laughs) Read together with me, please. Grateful for the advances in science and technology, we make careful use of their products. On guard against idolatry and harmful research, and careful to use them in ways that answer to God's demands to love our neighbor and to care for the earth and its creatures. Please join me as I read the Software Engineer's Prayer, which was taken from the booklet, A Month-Long Journey of Prayer for Various Industries, Praying for the City. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for the success and influence you have given the tech industry. Thank you for the many ways technology, software, and the internet have improved our lives. Thank you that technology has opened new opportunities and resources to so many. We pray that the technology industry would use all of its gifts and successes for the greater flourishing of society. We pray that those in the technology industry would be generous with the wealth, capability, and power they have received not clinging to any of these things for selfish gain, but releasing them freely so all would benefit. We pray those in the tech industry would act with humility, compassion, and servanthood. We pray that technology would be used to enhance our humanity in accordance with your design and image and not detract from it. We pray that more and more holistic technology solutions would be developed, improving economic opportunity, resources, support, and hope for all people. We pray that these technologies would be used to build communities, societies, and the world. God, let us be good stewards of our gifts, knowing how and when to use them. Grant us wisdom to see the opportunities to advance the greater good, the restoration of creation, and the furthering of your kingdom. Amen. As we sing our last hymn, join us in proclaiming the beauty of God's creation and praise him for his magnificent works. Oh, Lord, my God. 